Daniel Rotten Craig CMG is an English actor. He gained international fame by playing the fictional secret agent James Bond for five installments in the film series, from Casino Royale up to No Time to Die. Wikipedia Born, March 2, 1968, age 56 years, Chester, United Kingdom. Spouse, Rachel Wise, M. 2011, Fiona Loudon, M. 1992-1994. Upcoming movie, Wake Up Dead Man, A Knives Out Mystery. Height, 1.78 meters. Children, Ella Craig. Parents, Tim Craig, Carol Olivia Craig. One of the British theater's most famous faces, Daniel Craig, who waited tables as a struggling teenage actor with the National Youth Theater, has gone on to star as James Bond in Casino Royale, 2006, Quantum of Solace, 2008, Skyfall, 2012, Spectre, 2015, and No Time to Die, 2021. He was born Daniel Rotten Craig on March 2, 1968 at 41, Liverpool Road, Chester, Cheshire, England. His father, Timothy John Rotten Craig, was a merchant seaman turned steel erector, and then became landlord of the Ringo Bells pub in Frodsham, Cheshire. His mother, Carol Olivia, Williams, was an art teacher. Craig has English, as well as Irish, Scottish and Welsh, ancestry. His parents split up in 1972, and young Daniel was raised with his older sister, Leah, in Liverpool, then in Hoylake, Wirral, in the home of his mother. His interest in acting was encouraged by visits to the Liverpool Everyman Theatre arranged by his mother. From the age of six, Craig started acting in school plays, making his debut in the Frodsham Primary School production of Oliver, and his mother was the driving force behind his artistic aspirations. The first Bond movie he ever saw at the cinema was Roger Moore's Live and Let Die, 1973, Young Daniel Craig saw it with his father, so it took a special place in his heart. He was also a good athlete and was a rugby player at Hoylake Rugby Club. At age 14, Craig played roles in Oliver, Romeo, and Juliet and Cinderella at Hilbra High School in West Kirby, Wirral. He left Hilbra High School at age 16 to audition at the National Youth Theatre's NYT troupe on their tour in Manchester in 1984. He was accepted and moved down to London. There, his mother and father watched his stage debut as Agamemnon in Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida. As a struggling actor with the NYT, he was toiling in restaurant kitchens and as a waiter. Craig performed with NYT on tours to Valencia, Spain, and to Moscow, Russia, under the leadership of director Edward Wilson. He failed at repeated auditions at the Guildhall, but eventually his persistence paid off and in 1988, he entered the Guildhall School of Music and Drama at the Barbican. There, he studied alongside Ewan McGregor and Alastair McGowan, then later Damian Lewis and Joseph Fiennes, among others. He graduated in 1991, after a three-year course under the tutelage of Colin McCormick, the actor from the Royal Shakespeare Company. From 1992 to 1994, he was married to Scottish actress Fiona Loudon, their daughter, named Ella Craig, born 1992. Craig made his film debut in The Power of One, 1992. His film career continued on television, notably the BBC Two serial Our Friends in the North, 1996. He shot to international fame after playing supporting roles in Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, 2001, and Road to Perdition, 2002. He was nominated for his performances in the leading role in Layer Cake, 2004 and received other awards and nominations. Craig was named as the sixth actor to portray James Bond, in October 2005, weeks after he finished his work in Munich, 2005, where he co-starred with Eric Bana under the directorship of Steven Spielberg. Craig's reserved demeanor and his avoidance of the showbiz party red carpet milieu makes him a cool 007. He is the first blonde actor to play Bond, and also the first to be born after the start of the film series and also the first to be born after the death of author Ian Fleming in 1964. Four of the past Bond actors, Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, and Pierce Brosnan, have indicated that Craig is a good choice as Bond. 
He was appointed Companion of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, CMG, by Queen Elizabeth II at the 2022 Queen's New Year's Honors for his services to film and theater. Family Spouses Rachel Wise, June 22, 2011, Present, One Child Fiona Loudon, 1992-1994, Divorced, One Child Children Ella Craig Parents Timothy John Craig Carol Olivia Craig Relatives Leah Craig, Sibling Trademarks Blonde hair and blue eyes Deep smooth voice, rugged facial features Muscular physique Trivia He refused to dye his hair black to play James Bond While incognito at a cinema in the United States he was once asked if anyone had ever told him that he looked like Daniel Craig. He answered no and walked away. He quit smoking and gained 20 pounds of muscle for Casino Royale, 2006. Is a huge fan of science fiction series such as Star Trek, 1966, Doctor Who, 1963, and Firefly, 2002. Makes an uncredited cameo in Star Wars, Episode 7, The Force Awakens, 2015, as the stormtrooper on whom Ray performs a Jedi mind trick. After filming for Casino Royale, 2006, had wrapped and before production for Quantum of Solace, 2008, began, he had his body insured for $9.5 million. Craig has played a crucial role in the casting of his leading Bond girls since his first 007 portrayal in Casino Royale. 2006. None of the Bond girls have been chosen without his final approval. Was the only cast member of Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, 2001, to be a huge fan of the Tomb Raider video games. When it was confirmed that Craig would play Bond again in 2019, he officially became the longest-serving Bond. After Spectre, 2015, he was reportedly offered $150 million for two more James Bond films. Quit smoking before making Casino Royale, 2006. Close friends with Mark Strong and is the godfather of one of his sons. He was Marvel Studios' first choice for the role of Thor, before Chris Hemsworth was cast. Signed on to play James Bond in four more films after Casino Royale, 2006. Got into an altercation with a man after the man pinched his girlfriend's rear end. Has a daughter, Ella Craig, born 1992 who resides with his ex-wife Fiona Loudon in London. Became good friends with Nicole Kidman, after they worked together on The Invasion, 2007, and The Golden Compass, 2007. He is a huge fan of the British experimental rock band Radiohead. He was a huge fan of the fantasy trilogy, His Dark Materials, by Philip Pullman, before he was cast in the The Trilogy's first chapter The Golden Compass, 2007. Is a huge fan of Liverpool Football Club. Despite the negative press surrounding his selection as Pierce Brosnan's successor as James Bond, his performance in his 007 debut Casino Royale, 2006, earned overwhelming critical acclaim to the point Steven Spielberg predicted Craig would earn an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor in the movie. Craig ended up receiving a BAFTA nomination for Best Actor, the first time a Bond actor had received such a major nomination for his performance as James Bond was the last actor considered for the role of Rorschach in the movie adaptation of Alan Moore's comic book miniseries, Watchmen, 2009. Is a huge fan of Robert Altman films. One of the many actors considered to take over James Bond from Pierce Brosnan. He officially accepted the role in October 2005. His ancestry includes English, as well as Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and distant French Huguenot. He is a descendant of Sir William Burnaby, 1st Baronet, circa 1710-1776, a naval officer, and of Huguenot minister Daniel Chamier, 1564-1621. Currently resides in London, England, and New York City. He was nominated for a 2002 London Evening Standard Theatre Award for Best Actor for his performance in a number, in which he played three roles at the Royal Court Theatre downstairs. Attended and graduated from Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London, England, 1991. He was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 7007, Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California, on October 6, 2021.
He is the first E.O.N. James Bond actor, not to have Desmond Llewellyn, who died in a road accident in 1999, seven years before Casino Royale, 2006, as Gadget Master Q. He is the first actor to play James Bond, who was born after the film series began. Does not participate in social media. Ranked number 29 in the 2008 Telegraph's list the 100 most powerful people in British culture. He was the second English actor to play James Bond in the film series. The first was Roger Moore, the third Bond. At 5 feet 10 inches, he is the shortest actor to play James Bond. Good friends with supermodel Kate Moss, Gaspard Ulliel, and Nicole Kidman. Resided in London with German actress Heike Makic, 2001-2004. Although he has used them frequently in films as James Bond, he has a strong dislike of guns in real life. His father attended the same school as the immortal John Lennon. His then-girlfriend Satsuki Mitchell accompanied him to the world premiere of Casino Royale, 2006, in London. It was their first public appearance together. Esquire Magazine's Best Dressed Male He was considered for the role of the Doctor in Blindness, 2008, but Mark Ruffalo was cast instead. When he started as Bond, he was 38 and the series had already been running 44 years. As of 2020, has appeared in two films that were nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, Elizabeth, 1998, and Munich, 2005. Named as one of the European Films Shooting Stars by European Film Promotion, 2000, he was awarded the CMG, Companion of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, in the 2022 Queen's New Year's Honours list for his services to film and theatre. One of 115 people invited to join the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, AMPAS, in 2007. Voted number 7 in L, France, Magazine's 15 Sexiest Men poll. His stage credits include Hurley Burley at the Old Vic and Angels in America at the National. On October 18, 2022, he was appointed Companion of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, CMG, in the 2022 New Year Honors for his services to film and theater. In a case of life imitating art, the CMG is the same honor held by the character James Bond. First cousin, once removed, of Simon Jones. The parents are Timothy John and Carol Olivia Craig. Has an older sister, Leah Craig. The Latin expression Tempus Fugit, Time Flies, was used in two films with him, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, 2001, and Spectre, 2015. In 2018, a widely reported mathematical calculation of beauty deriving from ancient Greece concluded that Craig was the least handsome actor to have played James Bond in the long-running film series because of his very thin lips, bulbous nose, and wide face. The first Bond, Sean Connery, was calculated to be the most handsome according to the formula. Became an American citizen in 2019 and the second James Bond actor after Pierce Brosnan to become an American citizen. Visited the Sarajevo Film Festival. Born at 11.30 p.m., BST. Quotes. Time Out London Interview, October 7, 2015, answering, Do you ever look back and think, how the hell did I end up playing James Bond? I know, it is ludicrous, it is ridiculous. When I first got approached, I just thought, UVE made a mistake. I don't know, it is still crazy. I go through life thinking it's all going to end tomorrow. I don't believe in self-promotion, really, I can't be arsed. Time Out London Interview, October 7, 2015, answering, Can you imagine doing another Bond movie? Now? I'd rather break this glass and slash my wrists. No, not at the moment. Not at all, that s fine. I am over it at the moment. We redone. All I want to do is move on. People always say, that stuff you did in love is the devil, study for a portrait of Francis Bacon, 1998, must have been difficult. But I say, no, it wasn't really, that was some of the easier stuff to do, because it was always clear and made a lot of sense. It's when things are unclear and when you don't know what you're doing that's when things are difficult. As far as I'm concerned, I want to be nowhere else. It's difficult in film, because everybody wants to make a safe bet with roles, but if you are going to do stuff, then you should be getting strong reactions. 
I don't want audiences to be going, yeah, that's all right. Time Out London Interview, October 7, 2015, Answering, Do You Want to Move On from Bond for Good? I haven't given it any thought. For at least a year or two, I just don't want to think about it. I don't know what the next step is. I've no idea. Not because I am trying to be KG. Who the fuck knows? At the moment, we've done it. I am not in discussion with anybody about anything. If I did another Bond movie, it would only be for the money, it's something else. I'm speechless. I've just got to step up to the plate and deal with it. I had a confidence about it, but then that's because of the people around me who made me feel good about it. I knew positively on Monday. I was in Baltimore when I took the call. My first reaction was I needed a drink. I hate handguns. Handguns are used to shoot people, and as long as they are around, people will shoot each other. That's a simple fact. I've seen a bullet wound, and it was a mess. It was on a shoot, and it scared me. Bullets have a nasty habit of finding their target, and that's what's scary about them. Time Out London Interview, October 7, 2015, answering, playing James Bond is a lot about how you look the clothes, the walk, the fitness. Do you ever get fed up with all that? It is a drag. The best acting is when you re not concerned about the surface. And Bond is the opposite of that. You have to be bothered about how you re-looking. It is a struggle. I know that how Bond wears a suit and walks into a room is important. But as an actor, I don't want to give a fuck about what I look like, so I have to play with both things. In a way that works, as that s Bond, he looks good and he doesn't t give a fuck what you think. I kind of feel that if you look at the track record of most Bonds, I mean Sean Connery obviously defined the part, and even he struggled for a while to get rid of the mantle. That's the pitfall, and it could happen to me. I've been working so hard, for however long it is I've been doing this, to try and stick to doing stuff I totally believe in and that would be wiped out. I thought, God, this is all right, I'm doing what I want to do. And that was a huge weight off my shoulders. I just wanted to see him, James Bond, make a few mistakes. I want to make the audience believe that it's all going to go wrong, and then when it goes right, it's much more exciting. Every day you pick up an injury, and you're battered and bruised. If you're not physically fit, then it's difficult to get through. I'm a Bond fan. If I go and see a Bond movie, there are certain things I think should be in it. And they're there. We've got them in spades. Nobody knows more than I do how important this is, and it's my job to get it right. On the backlash from Bond fans, I didn't expect this backlash. You take it in, you can't help it. I've been trying to give 110% since the beginning, but after all the fuss, maybe I started giving 115%. Interview in Entertainment Weekly magazine, if I went onto the internet and started looking at what some people were saying about me which, sadly, I have done it would drive me insane. Interview in Entertainment Weekly magazine, they, diehard James Bond fans, hate me. They don't think I'm right for the role. It's as simple as that. They're passionate about it, which I understand, but I do wish they'd reserve judgment. I hope it's going to be liberating. I'm not putting any negative spin on this because to be typecast as James Bond is a very high-class problem for an actor, and I'm certainly going to try to get as much out of it as I can. Of course I am always going to think about whether it is going to limit what I do. I plan for it not to, but if it does, I'll approach that problem when it comes. I wanted to do as much of the action work as I could, so that the audience can see it's me and it's real. I feel like I became a sportsman of sorts, and that meant acquiring injuries, and carrying on, and bashing through to the next level of pain. Although the stunt team did fantastic work to make sure that everything was as safe as possible, if you don't get bruised playing Bond, you're not doing it properly. I had black eyes, I had cuts, I was bruised, I had muscle strains, and I took a lot of painkillers but it was part of the job. As much as I was hurt, the stuntmen were in much more pain. I was affected by it, of course I was. What bothered me was that I was being criticized before I had done the work. I wasn't going to get into an argument with these people, so my only response was, see the movie and then you have the right to criticize, 
but first see what I am trying to do. It strengthened my resolve. I was hurt by it, but it just made me try harder. The pressure was there. I know a lot of people feel very passionate about the Bond movies, but so do I, so I just got on with it. What I tried to achieve was just making a movie people will want to go and see, and I think we have made a great movie. One of the things I was criticized for was that I looked like a bad guy, but I was happy with that because I think true good guys have to step into the dark side to do their job. I wanted people to question Bond's morals and his judgment. Sean Connery set and defined the character. He did something extraordinary with that role. He was bad, sexy, animalistic, and stylish, and it is because of him I am here today. I wanted Sean Connery's approval and he sent me messages of support, which meant a lot to me. Interview with David Jamarco, Hello. Magazine, November 27, 06, about the plot for Bond 21, what we've done is set in process the idea that there's an organization out there and Bond is now after them. That's where we will pick up the next film. There's going to be a real element of revenge. Onset interview with David Jamarco, The Globe and Mail, March 27, 06, I got a personal trainer for Casino Royale, 2006, which has been an absolute godsend. I knew I had to be in the best shape I could be, otherwise I would never survive it. Because at the end of the day, there isn't any painting it in for this movie. These stunts aren't going to be helped by CGI. What you're seeing is the real thing. And I've got the bruises to prove it. Interview with David Jamarco, Hello. Magazine, November 27, 06, on on being approached to take over the James Bond character, Pierce Brosnan, and I had a few drinks over it and we discussed it. And his advice to me was, go for it. Which I think is the best advice I could have gotten. On preparing for his second James Bond performance, last time I did a lot of weights to bulk up. This time I'll do more running. I won't be as no neck. But when this guy takes his shirt off, he should look like he could kill someone. I always wanted to be an actor. I had the arrogance to believe I couldn't be anything else. Method actors suggest that you do sense memory exercises every time you do a scene. I use every method I can. Whatever works, I'll use. Well, competition is so important, even when you're an artist. And if you deny that there's competition, then you're a liar. That's what gives you your ambition. On first hearing he had the role of James Bond, when, Bond producer Barbara Broccoli, rang me to tell me I'd got the part, I was buying dishwashing tablets in Whole Foods. I promptly dropped them. Remarking on an injury he sustained on the set of Quantum of Solace, 2008, I lost my fingerprint, so now I can go out and commit all sorts of crimes. On the delayed sequel to Quantum of Solace, 2008, the new Bond movie is on hold, but I am champing at the bit to get going on it as quickly as possible. I love playing Bond, I don't want to be away from it for too long. I think there's a lot to be said for keeping your own counsel. It's not about being afraid to be public with your emotions, or about who you are and what you stand for. But if you sell it off, it's gone. You can't buy it back, you can't buy your privacy back. Ooh, I want to be alone. Fuck you. We've been in your living room. We were at your birth. You filmed it for us and showed us the placenta, and now you want some privacy? Look at the Kardashians, they're worth millions. I don't think they were that badly off to begin with, but now look at them. You see that, and you think. What, you mean all I have to do is behave like a fucking idiot on television, and then you'll pay me millions? I'm not judging it, well, I am obviously. You talk to people in the movie business who have been doing this 40 years and they all say the difference is that, back in the day, you could go and have a drink in the bar, get drunk, fall over, have a good time, relax, whatever, and no one would know about it. But now everyone's got a camera. Not that all I want to do is get drunk in a bar, but that's an example. So you can't live a normal life anymore, because it will become public knowledge that you've whatever gotten drunk in a bar, or skinny dipped on a beach or something. Things that normal people do occasionally. And in a way that's kind of IV got to be high class. I've done a lot of things in my life. But you have to think in that way. Which is sad, because I like bars.
On how the character of James Bond has matured over time, what I'm doing is not what Pierce was doing, and Pierce wasn't doing what Roger Moore was doing, or what Sean was doing, or what Timothy, Dalton, was doing. Things have changed. It's just kind of the right of it. Pierce used to say that it's like being responsible for a small country. It's kind of like you have to look after it diplomatically. I kind of get that, but I can't really say that's my deal. I'm not going to be the poster boy for this. Although I am the poster boy. Salaries. No Time to Die, 2021, $25 million. Spectre, 2015, $25 million, plus back-end earnings. Skyfall, 2012, $17 million, plus bonuses for certain box office milestones. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, 2011, $6 million. Dreamhouse, 2011, $5 million. Cowboys and Aliens, 2011, $6 million. Quantum of Solace, 2008, $7,200,000. Casino Royale, 2006, $3,200,000. Thank <laughs> you.